Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the AAS YouTube channel. And this is part of the really good stuff. This is the ebook series. And I am super happy to have ebook author Sylvain Chatty with us today. Hey, Sylvain. Hello. And Sylvain, I'm doing well. How are you doing? Very nice, very fine. I am very happy because I received my first copy of the awesome. my book today. So I'm yeah, I'm super happy. That's great. You got a paper copy. Awesome. But they're free otherwise, people, so go get them. And Sylvain, where are you where are you located at? Well, I'm in Paris. Not very sunny today, but uh not too cold either, so that's fine. Good. So we're past equinox, so you know, fall is coming. Yes. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so what gave you the idea to, or did you get um, hassled into doing <laughs> an ebook? So what gave you the idea to, to do an ebook on this? Yeah, in fact, it's not really, uh... well, I had uh, for a long time the idea of writing a book on this, on my subject of research that, you know, I began uh... 90. Oh, long time ago uh, and then uh, at uh, IAU meeting International Astronomical Union meeting uh, I met uh, Leigh Jenkins who is editor oh, at yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. AES uh, IUP mm -hmm. and then uh, well she told me uh, come to meet me and uh, let's have a chat about uh, writing an ebook cool okay. and uh, so we discussed this and uh, I, I think her proposal met my uh, a desire to do this uh, book for a long time and uh, nice well uh, it took me then uh, quite a few years to begin this work yeah i was gonna say and then at some point i i decided to write it and uh, and here it is now <laughs> that is so cool so when you once you started writing um how long did it take to go from that point to the finished product was this sort of like a two-week project was this more like a two-year project where was what was this nice no, well, it's in between two weeks and two years, okay. because in fact, I began this uh, writing uh, just before Christmas uh, 2020. Oh, okay. And, uh, I finished it uh, oh. uh, for uh, New Year's Eve 2021. Ah, so it took okay. me one year, in fact. Yeah, yeah. Me one year. And, uh, and then... Uh, well, then, you know, there are the corrections part and things like this. So yeah, uh, this location. went up, up to May uh, 2022. So yeah, in a, a, a bit more than one year, I would say. Very good. Cool. And who's the target audience for the book? Is this aimed at uh, undergraduates? Is it graduates? Is it researchers? Or what's the target for this one? Well, I would say it's... Um, uh, oh. Or a mix. Probably undergraduates who are motivated or who are doing an internship, you know, on, a, on this kind of uh, subject, on the accreting binaries. Mm -hmm. Or a graduate student, a PhD student uh, that is working on this field, or also a researcher that are a bit new to this field. Because what I, uh, what I guess we'll speak about this later, but what I wanted to do is uh, to be able to have uh, a grasp of all the fields that were attached to accreting binaries yeah. from their formation to uh, to their end point. So, so, yeah, uh, everything that you need to know about accreting binaries is in this book. Awesome. <laughs> and let's go ahead and let's get into what exactly is in this book. So we're going to do a screen share and accreting binaries, nature, formation and evolution. And Sylvain, take us away. Yes, uh, so accreting binaries are the uh, binaries that are, well, accreting. So in fact, oh. most of the stars in the universe are in couples, you know, they are in pairs. So mm -hmm. you have two stars and uh, well, uh, we estimate that nearly more more than 75% of the stars in the universe, in our galaxy or in the universe, uh, at some point of their life, uh, have a companion, companion star. And so they exchange matter and angular momentum between uh, each other. Oh. So they are 
accreting binaries. So accreting is just the process of uh, transferring matter from one star to the other. And uh, so you have two stars and you have some matter going on to the, from one star to the other one. Mm -hmm. And then there are many phenomena that can happen, which are high energy phenomena, so interesting phenomena. And this can happen already. Uh, in fact, accretion of matter can happen already at the formation of the stars. Then it can happen during all its life. Yeah. And uh, and at the end, uh, there are also phenomena of uh, accretion and uh, uh, which uh, are also related to ejections. So this is why on the figure you see not only accretion like this uh, mm -hmm. on the accretion disk, but also you see jets mm -hmm. because when there is accretion, there is jets. So you have a whole lot of uh, uh, phenomena, high energy phenomena, which has related to accretion and ejection. And so it's uh, a lot of fun with uh, very interesting physics. Not always easy, but uh, interesting. Uh, that's <laughs> true. And for those who are curious, this is the high energy corridor symbol of the AAS IOP. And so this one is definitely down the high energy corridor. Um, and if you're curious about all the corridors, well, there you go. I've got all seven of them <laughs> on my shirt. That's right. There's a high energy right there. And so we're covering accreting binaries today. So yeah. let's go ahead and take a look at the table of contents. Uh, there's the IOP program. Ethan Vishniak is the AAS editor in chief. Steve Qualler heads up the advisory board. Accreting binaries. And I love this opening quote. I think that's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like this one. Yeah, very nice. And then we oh, get into the table of contents. And so discovery and basics, all of that. So, Sylvain, let's go. Yeah, what uh, as I said, what I wanted to do is uh, to bring people from uh, uh, the very basics of binaries up to the accretion and ejection phenomena and the up, uh, at the end, the endpoints of these uh, objects. Mm -hmm. So of course, to have a binary, you need uh, two single stars. Yeah. So I began, uh, well, I opened this uh, book after the introduction. I opened this book with the uh, all the basics that you need to understand the single stars. And in fact, it's uh, very uh, important to understand how these stars uh, form and then evolve because uh, all of these will have an impact on the evolution of the binaries, because uh, of course in a binary, well, uh, each star evolves. The only the difference is that uh, when you have an isolated star, well, it evolves at its uh, rhythm uh, without being disturbed by another star. But when you have a binary, it will be uh, disturbed by the other star and exchanging matter on angular momentum. So it can uh, lose mass or mm -hmm. attract mass uh, and then this changed the evolution of the, of the binary. Indeed. And then after this uh, single star, where I, yes, there are some uh, particularities uh, for the binaries. So this is in the chapter three that I defined uh, what is a binary and all the general properties, yeah. like the, all the parameters that are associated to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, when you speak about accretion, well, you have to speak about all the Gravity, so equipotentials of gravity, transfer of mass, angular momentum. So these are really the basics that uh, we will find in all the rest, all the systems. Because I, as we will see, there is a, quite a rich uh, zoology of accreting binaries, but most of the phenomena, you know, physical phenomena are the same uh, related to the common envelope, which is a phase during the evolution of these binaries but also yeah, physics like a radiation mechanism, formation of accretion disk, and also uh, ejections. So all of this, we'll find it in all the all this rich zoology of uh, binaries. Very cool, nice. Okay, and then we get into some specifics of the zoology. Yeah, then there are some specifics because uh, well, it's always easier to uh, split into different uh, types of objects. And in fact, there are, uh, well, uh, I would say four uh, important uh, distinctions in the uh, binaries, including binaries. So the first chapter is on uh, uh, cataclysmic variables. I like this name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cataclysmic variables. So they are, well, we'll see, we see already that they are very transient objects, so very variables. Uh, 
very changing luminosity in the, the optical uh, or also in other wavelengths. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are hosting uh, white dwarfs because, uh, uh, as we'll see, the other objects can host uh, neutron stars or uh, even black holes. Right. And these are the three outcomes of the stellar evolution. So the star, for, it, for instance, will finish in a white dwarf. You told me that you like very much the sun. Right? Uh, it will uh, finish uh, its life in a white dwarf. Turn in, yes, it will. But it will not finish as a cataclysmic variable because it's not uh, in a binary. So it is, uh, it leaves uh, its life alone. So it will uh, just finish in a white dwarf. But if you have a white dwarf with a star close to it, then uh, the white dwarf attracts the matter of this star. And there you have formation of accretion disk, formation of ejection. It yeah. can be also uh, complicated by the presence of magnetic field and things like this. So, well, this is why I uh, I, uh, I spoke with this uh, this magnetic CVs, for instance. And perhaps if we can, well, you can go to the figure the the first figure of the chapter, which is which is figure four four point one. Chapter four. Uh, there we'll have the schematic view. Mm -hmm. Yes, one. You have a schematic view of a <coughs> cataclysmic variable. So you see that there is a star which is uh, on the right, uh, normal star. Uh, and some of its matter, it's attracted to the uh, white dwarf, which is in the center of this uh, white uh, thing uh, mm -hmm. uh, on, the, on the left. Mm -hmm. And this white dwarf is surrounded by this accretion disk. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, this is a star, uh, a white dwarf, which is not um, magnetized or very low magnetic field. So yes. you have an accretion disk, which goes nearly all the way towards the, the white dwarf. Mm -hmm. And all this matter is aggregated on the white dwarf. So you have phenomena of uh, a thermonuclear bursting, which is like uh, well, the explosion that you have uh, inside the sun. You, you know, you have some uh, hydrogen fusion, which uh, uh, allow to, uh, uh, to, to, to fuse it in helium and to produce mm -hmm. light and heat. And so all of this can happen in, a, uh, in this kind of, uh, of objects. Indeed. So they are very energetic. And in fact, there is also an ingredient which is very important is that we see them in nearly all the wavelengths. We can see them not only in optical, but also in infrared, because the, the disk can, uh, can have some uh, uh, lower temperatures than mm -hmm. the star. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we can see it in uh, X-rays, because you have some uh, very hot... Uh, the, if you look at the, uh, at the inner point of the accretion disk, so very close to the white dwarf. Mm -hmm. There, it's very hot, very warm, heated at millions of degrees. And this creates uh, X-ray emission. Mm -hmm. So it can be very, uh, very, very hot. And, uh, and, so, and so, in fact, to understand this kind of object, we have to observe at all the wavelengths. So we say that we do some uh, multi-wavelength astronomy. So yes. we observe from, uh, from in, in optical, infrared, X-rays, also radio, because the jet, we see it in radio. Uh, um, yeah. The the, yeah. the star which is on the right, we see it in the optical, infrared, and ultraviolet. And mm -hmm. the accretion disk, we see it from infrared to X rays. The jet yeah. in radio. So in fact, if we if you want to understand everything, you have to observe in all the wavelengths. Yes, absolutely. Which uh, makes the thing more complicated, but also more interesting. That it does. That it does. Very cool. Very cool. And so we will slide. Yeah, there are some very cool objects. Warm objects, but very cool. <laughs> Where's my thing? Okay, here we go. And we are sliding back to CDs. Yeah. Okay. We've got a zoology, AM CDNs, and super soft sources. Yeah, and it's, yeah because in, um, in CDs, you have some uh, uh, cataclysmic variables which are magnetized. Mm -hmm. and other which are not magnetized. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we have different types of, uh, of CVs. And in this chapter, I also put the binary white dwarfs, which are uh, two white dwarfs, because if you have binary system, you first have a star which will evolve into a uh, collapse into a white dwarf, and then you have another star which also collapses into a white dwarf. So you have two white dwarfs mm -hmm. that orbit each other. And, uh, and, and at the end, then, you know, they will uh, lose gravitational radiation, and they can even, uh, at some point, uh, end up uh, colliding at the end of their uh, 
why I like the clue. Uh, John, and this is uh, something that uh, uh, this this uh, rotation is something that we'll see uh with the uh, gravitational wave uh, detectors not the one that we have now but we some that we will have in the future like uh, one that we call uh, that is called lisa yes which will observe uh, in the galaxy uh, mm -hmm. a noise of uh, binary white dwarfs cool cool very and nice. i speak about this at the end of uh, this book very nice so, yeah we well uh We'll see later that we there. Some of these accruising binaries are also very good candidates for uh, uh, to be detected with the gravitational waves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Decameter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And then we go from white dwarfs into something a little more compact. Exactly. Then um, okay. after the white dwarf, uh, uh, where we speak about these. Uh, uh low mass and uh, high mass x-ray binaries so first if we begin with the low mass okay the low mass x-ray binaries um well they are like uh the cvs except that you change you exchange the white dwarf into a more compact object okay. which can be either a neutron star or black hole okay and in fact we have nearly the not the same but uh, for uh, many systems we have the same phenomena of accretion Perhaps we can go to the uh, to the figure. So sure. Which figure are we going to? The figure. What one of the first one. one. Yeah, chapter five. The figure. Well, the figure five point one. I think to be ready. Yeah, zero. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes, this one. <laughs> well, in this one, you see uh, again the star which uh, is quite normal, which is called the companion star on the right. Oh. And uh, this star um, loses matter, which is attracted into a, a compact object, which is on the left here, yes. Mm -hmm. And this compact object can be either a neutron star or black hole. Okay. And, uh, and, and around this compact object, you have all the matter of the companion star, which is attracted, forms an accretion disk. And the particularity in this accretion disk is that uh, you have some viscous... Uh, breaking mm -hmm. and so also this uh, viscosity creates the heating and in fact it's just because viscosity like uh, like this you know when you have your hand like this it creates some heat and yes. just this heat that uh, <coughs> well the matter is very uh, condensed and uh, so there is a lot of heating and so yeah. this creates uh, heating up to millions of degrees yeah. so again emitting right. an x-rays yes and we see here clearly in this figure well, uh, the the jet because you have some matter which is uh, going very close uh, to the surface of the compact object mm -hmm. and some matter which is not going to the surface but is the, is is ejected so you have creation of a jet also mm -hmm. and so when we uh, then you as I said we have uh, either a neutron star or black hole and the two objects are different because the neutron star has has a material surface which means that if you well, I don't recommend it, but if you touch the surface of the neutron star, you know, it's solid. It's very solid, very compact. Very hard. And uh, so the, the same happens to the matter which is inside the accretion disk. When it, when, it goes, when it gets very close to the surface of the neutron star, it right. can be uh, there, it accumulates, and then you can have, again, some nuclear, thermonuclear burning. Mm. So uh, a fusion of hydro hydrogen, which, we, which will fuse into uh, helium. And uh, this is something that we see very clearly. Uh, very clearly, we have some signature of this matter accumulating and uh, and uh, fusioning like this in, uh, into helium. Yes. Of course, if you have a black hole, you don't see this. You have a black hole, you see the matter which is going through the horizon, right? And it disappears. So you have different phenomena for the neutron stars or the black holes. Mm -hmm. So the physics is nearly the same, except that. Uh, uh, well, the particularity of the black hole, which is that uh, uh, the it, nothing can escape, so even not the light can escape a black hole. Right. Uh, you don't have any material surface, so if you uh, uh, get very, if you get very close to a black hole, uh, you cannot touch it. I don't recommend it either because uh, as soon as you have your arm, which is uh, inside the horizon, you know, you, well, you, you you lose your arm, and probably you are very close to to lose you, all of you, also. <laughs> 
Very good. <laughs> uh, so how do we tell the difference between whether it's a neutron star or a black hole? Well, exactly because you can um, uh, see some uh, events that you uh, that you can see on neutron stars and not on black holes. Because on neutron stars, since the matter can accumulate mm -hmm. on the surface, you have some explosions yes. which are due to this accumulation of matter that you don't see on black holes. Okay. So you have some clear signature in X-rays mm -hmm. that tells you it's a neutron star and you don't see this in, in black holes. Okay, good. Very nice. Very yeah, nice. they are nice objects. <laughs> All right. So also there is a, a zoology inside this uh, Laoma six ray binaries because uh, for some uh, neutron star objects, um, you have uh, some that are much more magnetized than others. So mm. it gives you some phenomena. Yeah, we could all use. And so there is a whole uh, section is this in this chapter about the uh, um, the variability properties mm. of uh, objects. Uh, in Newton star, but also for the black hole system. Right. Yeah, we got a whole definite zoology here. A toll sources. Yes. Sources. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, we can go uh, perhaps to the figure 5.24. Sure. Let's try this one. Uh, yeah, it's. Um, mm -hmm. Down a little bit. You will find it in the page uh, 540. Mm -hmm. 540, yeah. Sorry, I should use my cursor a little better. Well, we are approaching. There we go. 540. Uh, yes. There we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here you see the evolution of the these two types of system. On the left, you see the evolution of Laoma signature binary, the one we, we just spoke. So you have uh, first the the ZAMS, which is the zero age main sequence, which is the first uh -huh. age of the uh, evolution when the, the, the stars have formed. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you see that there is one star which is evolving, which is which means that uh, it gets uh, bigger, and uh, and then it begins to transfer matter to the stars to the star on the right. Yes. And uh, and then it is an entering uh, what we what we call the common envelope phase. So it's uh, written CE, yes, here. Mm -hmm. And at this point, it's very interesting because you have, uh, so the star which uh, got bigger, it, it is engulfing the other object. So mm -hmm. the other object is now uh, orbiting inside the envelope of the star that got bigger. And there, there are, uh, in this case, there are two possibilities. Either you, you, you keep this envelope and the star that, is orbiting inside is getting closer and closer, spiraling, and at the end it will just sit in the middle of this star, and it will stay like this forever. Cool. Well, until mm -hmm. the star dies. Mm -hmm. and the other possibility is if uh, uh, the envelope is ejected, at some point you will have uh, the two uh, objects that came very close together, uh, so the big star uh, will lose its envelope, okay. and will also collapse uh, in what we call a supernova. So it's mm -hmm. a big explosion. Yeah. And so you have this uh, SN here, yes, with uh, the other star, which is uh, very close. And uh, at the end, after this stage, we have the Lauma 6 binary. So it's only at this point that we have some accretion of matter from the star to the compact object, which is a neutron star or a black hole. In this case, it's a neutron star. Okay. And we see the accretion disk also. And then uh, at the end, we have uh, the star, which is remaining on the right, which yeah. is collapsing into a white dwarf. And we mm -hmm. have uh, a little star plus white dwarf. Yeah. Here, compact object. So we see the evolution of the Laoma 6 ray binary. Okay. Well, perhaps we can, uh, I don't know, we can come back to the table of contents, or I can also describe the high mass binary, which is the following chapter. I can describe it on this figure. Yeah, let's do because, that. Because uh, in fact, uh, so the, the difference between the low mass and the high mass binary is that one has a low mass and the other has a high mass. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, physics is very simple, you know. <laughs> so uh, so on, the, on the left, you have the low mass binary. On the right, you have the high mass, which means that the two stars have a high mass. Okay. And in this case, uh, so the first uh, part is nearly the same. You have uh, evolution. 
The only difference is that the first star that got uh, very big there on the uh, on the second stage mm -hmm. is is now so so massive that it will explode very quickly. So it will collapse into a supernova and in, uh, form a neutron star or black hole. In this case, it's a neutron star. Yes. So this is the supernova case on the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. mm -hmm. And then after this you have what we call the high mass x binary. So the high mass x binary, uh, so it's a massive star, which is on the right of this phase. And you see there are many, uh, many things that go out of this star. In, this is uh, the stellar wind. So ah. it's uh, very um, energetic particles that come from the star. The, yes. solar, the sun also has a solar wind, but it's not so energetic, but still important for the for the solar system and for Earth and for air for us, yes. in fact. Mm. And uh, so this star, which is uh, ejecting many particles, these particles are attracted by the neutron star, which is on the left. Okay. And this creates also some uh, X-rays. And this is the high mass X-ray binary phase. Okay. So at this point, they are creating, but it, uh, it doesn't form an accretion disk so big that uh, it used to be in the case of the low mass x-ray binary. Okay, they're tighter. Yeah, much mm -hmm. smaller. Mm -hmm. And so after this uh, high mass x-ray binary phase, you have again the common envelope. Yes. So in this case, you have a neutron star, which is orbiting inside the red giant, the very big uh, star. And at the end, the envelope is ejected, and you have a neutron star orbiting another neutron star, because mm -hmm. the red giant has collapsed into another neutron star. And you have two neutron stars uh, orbiting each other. Which are... Uh... And, uh, and these are very interesting objects be because um, they orbit each other for a long time. They lose gravitational radiation. So they, came, they come closer and closer and closer. And at some point, they will merge. So you have neutron stars which are entering another neutron star or black hole which is entering a black hole, or even black hole entering a neutron star. And this uh, emits some gravitational radiation mm -hmm. that is now uh, detected by the detectors like LIGO or VIRGO, mm -hmm. CAGRA detectors. Yeah, LVK. That we, can, uh, yeah. that we can detect now Very on, nice. on Earth. So we get observations almost all the way along the line here on both of them. Very good. Yes. Yes, and in fact, in this book, I also, uh, uh, so I, I describe the physics, but I also uh, describe the observation that we have at, at different uh, stages of the evolution, mm -hmm. and also all the results of the simulations that we can make on, on this object. Cool. Let's slide back up to the table of contents again. Let's see where we're at. And we just covered high mass zoology. Ooh, yes. We Exactly. So we were in the, in the high mass binary, which is a big chapter because uh, well, there are many things to say. There is also a rich zoology on these uh, systems. Mm -hmm. So some systems uh, host some uh, BE stars. So the BE stars are stars that are rotating very quickly, uh, nearly uh, close to the disruption. And, uh, and so you have, uh, uh, they, they, they rotate so quickly that the at the equator, you have some matter which is accumulating into a decretion disk. Ooh. So you have a disk around the star. Mm -hmm. Some other systems host some supergiant stars, so more massive, more active, a very strong stellar wind. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, so we have different zoology like this. For the B, uh, the B are interesting because uh, uh, you have the, so, so I said you have the, this decretion disk, and if you have a neutron star around it, it's orbiting periodically, and each each time it goes through the disk, through mm -hmm. the decretion disk of the star, mm -hmm. you have some emission of X-rays. So you see an, a periodic emission like this each cool. time it goes. Through. So cool. that is also um, that, that these are also interesting objects. Yeah, very nice, interesting, very good. Yeah, and so perhaps we can go to the. Uh, the figure 6.22, which is page 6.41, 641. Right. Oh, go to uh, figure 6.21, which is page uh, 640. Sorry. So it is, uh, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, 6.6, exactly. Yeah, 6, yeah. 6.40. Yeah, nearly there. 640? 640, yeah. So figure 621? Yes, exactly, yeah. So there you see uh, exactly what I was uh, speaking at. At the end of the evolution of a uh, binary, so we have this uh, in-spiral phase. So you have the two neutron stars or two black holes. In here, in this case, it's about black holes that turn uh, each other, orbit around each other. And at the end, they merge. Uh, so you have this ring down phase. Yeah. And uh, you see, um, you see these oscillations. So they 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 rotate very quickly. Uh, just before the uh, the merging, the the displacement of the of these black holes. So their speed is uh, reaching nearly sixty percent the velocity of the light. Yeah. So it's very very uh, energetic. And at the end, the merge. Well, it doesn't make this noise, but uh, the the merge and, uh, and this uh, merging. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, well, for the first merging, for instance, we we detected a, a merging of uh, two stars of nearly thirty solar masses, mm-hmm. and uh, during the merging, uh, the total final mass was three solar masses less than the sum of the first one, so the, the, mm-hmm. of the initial one, which means that during the merging, it lost three solar masses, converting into energy, uh, and this is the emission of gravitational waves, which made uh, uh, all the universe uh, uh, deform a bit, and this is what we detected with these gravitational waves. Nice, very cool. And in fact, if you go to the figure which is just after this one, just the page after, uh-huh. figure Ooh, 22. Yes. The graveyard. Yes, exactly. There you see, uh, uh, well, you see in blue. All the black holes that have uh, been uh, detected by uh, LIGO Virgo. So these are the black hole binaries that have been detected by LIGO Virgo. And um, and, in this figure, you see the two initial black holes that have uh, merged into a a, a much heavier black hole. Mm -hmm. And in in, um, uh, yellow, I think, which is the just in the yeah low part of the figure, you have all the neutron stars. Yeah. Uh, which have been detected uh, with the uh, electromagnetic wavelengths. And in orange, you see the uh, neutron stars that have merged detected with the gravitational wave. Ah, that's the orange here, yes. Uh-huh. Yes, exactly. There are not many events, but they are yeah. also very important. They are. And uh, in, uh, yeah, just for completude, in, uh, in red, you have all the black holes detected with the uh, electromagnetic uh, waves. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so in fact, this is um, this figure is very important because it showed that now uh, in this field we have uh, begun to enter the multi messenger astrophysics, as we say, which is yes. not only the multi wavelengths, but we add to the photon the study of the gravitational waves and also neutrinos and also cosmic rays. So we had we had different messengers like this, and this is on it is only by studying these different messengers that we really understand the physics. Associated to these objects, nice. so this is very important. Very cool. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Let's see where we're at. Let's go back up to IMS X-ray binary. There we go. Burp, burp. Yeah, I think we, we covered the chapter five and six nearly together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, so we covered the cataclysmic variable, the low mass of binaries, and the high mass of binaries. Yes. Yeah. Well, there is another one. There is another. Is the, Catch all. The other accretion binaries. Other. <laughs> other. <laughs> uh, the other, because in fact, since you have the low mass and the high mass, and uh, in fact, you have a continuity nearly in mass, we 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 thought it would nice also to have the intermediate mass of your binary. <laughs> Okay. Up so we have this. Uh, we 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 don't have much of these objects. We have some. Um, so in this book, I also put a table on the different uh, different uh, sources: the low mass, high mass, intermediate mass, if your binaries. Mm-hmm. And uh, perhaps what is more important uh, here is to um, uh, well, for intermediate mass, in fact, we have well. So we have so low mass means that you have a, a compact object. Uh, which is with uh, orbiting a star which has a mass of one solar mass, typically, or less. 
And the high mass means that uh, you have a compact object orbiting a star of mass eight solar masses or more. So intermediate mm -hmm. mass is between one and eight. Okay. So if we go to the uh, ultra luminous uh, X-ray source, this is interesting. Perhaps um, well, we can go to uh, figure uh, seven point three, which is page uh, seven seven. Seven seven. One more seven seven. Ooh. There we go. Yeah. So here you see a, a galaxy, and uh, in this uh, small uh, circle, you have a, a very uh, energetic X-ray source. Yes. And this X-ray source, in fact, we, we still don't uh, completely know what this is. So it can be... Uh, okay. uh, what we know is that when we uh, look at the energy associated to this source, it's uh, it's huge. Yes. So we have to understand how this energy can come out of this object. And uh, there are two possibilities. In astrophysics, we, uh, when we see something, we don't know if uh, everybody in the universe can see it or only us, because we don't know if it's a jet pointing towards us sure or enough. if it's emitting everywhere. Right. But of course, it's not the same energy, which is only a jet pointing towards us or if it's emitting everywhere. Mm -hmm. So there are two uh, two different origins of this uh, emission, uh, possible origins, and um, one of one of them is that uh, you would have uh, uh, an intermediate mass black hole, for example, uh, five hundred masses, solar masses, mm -hmm. and um, and accreting uh, from uh, stars or gas okay. that could uh, emit. That so with the accretion you could have then ejection, uh, and ejection pointing towards you could make this energy that we see uh, here. So this is one of the possibilities. Okay. Another one uh, for some other objects, it can be uh, also the presence of a neutron star that is uh, that could uh, explain this uh, some of some of this energy. So it's still uh, a field which Three. is. Uh, well, uh, Active. Are, some objects are very mysterious, so it's still a field which is very hot and uh, many uh, observations done, also many simulations and, uh, and even uh, theoretical studies to understand uh, uh, some of these objects. And for uh, some of these, uh, there is even one of these objects where uh, um, it, we could face uh, a, a black hole which uh, is uh, like ten thousand solar masses, Oops. so a very massive black hole yeah. uh, that could produce uh, some of this uh, emission. Mm -hmm. Those little heavier intermediate mass black holes. Yes, so. intermediate mass black hole. Because in fact, all the stellar mass black hole. I should have said this before, but all the stellar mass black hole that we see uh, in our galaxy, or even uh, from uh, gravitational wave detections are black holes of nearly a maximum of 140 yeah. solar masses, which is already mm -hmm. huge, probably formed by subsequent merging of black holes. But yeah. we don't see more massive black holes uh, coming from stars. Then we have the what we call the supermassive black holes, which are at the center of the galaxies. Mm -hmm. These black holes can have mass of uh, millions, like mm -hmm. in the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. 4 yeah. million solar masses, but we can find also some supermassive black holes of uh, billions uh, or even 10 billion solar masses. But we have a missing link, which is between 100 solar masses, 100 or so solar masses, and millions. So these okay. ultra luminous X-ray sources could be the missing link between uh, these two uh, ah. extreme mass ah. black holes. Very so nice. yeah, these are also interesting. Indeed. Well, all the binaries are interesting. They're going to need a. They're going to need a new chapter title after a little while. We won't call them other. We'll have an actual name for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, possibly. Other accreting binary systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, other accreting binaries. Yeah. Yeah, and then we have the jets because. Um, yeah, at some uh, at some point of the writing, I uh, I included the the jets uh, in the CBs, cataclysmic variables, in the low mass, in the high mass, and then I realized that I was 
uh, always writing the same thing. So I decided to Move it take out. this part out, mm -hmm. write a chapter on myself. And uh, well, I spoke already a bit about the Jets, but uh, uh, this is really uh, uh, something we find in uh, in all the, the systems. So, uh, uh, well, for instance, if we, perhaps we can go to the figure 8.1, which is not the... Uh, 8.1 is in yeah page 8.2. So it's at the beginning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not the oh, nicest wow. one, but uh, I made it myself, so I'm very proud of it. Very good. <laughs> so in fact, in this uh, this figure, you see the donor star with the matter which is accreted. Um, uh, so forming an accretion disk, and then you have the black hole in the middle. And as I said earlier, not all the matter is going to the black hole. You have nearly 90% which is coming towards the black hole and which you lose. And you have nearly 10%, which is accelerated to go out and uh, perpendicular to the accretion disk. And okay. this one is ejected. And this is very interesting because when it's ejected, it's matter which is then going towards the interstellar medium, the surroundings yeah. of, the, of the system, mm -hmm. and which will collide with uh, matter which is uh, round. So you can have some, uh, some phenomena that are very interesting. And for instance, uh, well, if you go after to the well, figure eight point two, mm -hmm. just the next figure, you yeah. see you see a case like this. So this is the case of SS four three three. Yes, this one. Mm -hmm. Where you see uh, the jet uh, which is coming out uh, of the system, which is interacting, colliding with the interstellar medium, and which has cre created this uh, this form. Uh, as it as it if it was drilling, you know, through the interstellar medium. Ah, gotcha. That's what you mean by that. Okay, got it. So it, it creates a shape in the interstellar medium mm -hmm. due to uh, in, in the system. You have also some uh, a precession of the jet. So you have many things that are happening that are very interesting. Cool. And we have different form like this. Uh, uh, so, well, in a figure, the following figure, you have the, the image of the, of the central engine. So really the, the central part of the jet where you see here the precession and the drilling mechanism. So you see that the jet is ejected. And uh, in fact, so uh, just at the beginning, when, it, when it's launched, it has this form and this precession and this continue then forever until it is uh, impacting and drilling the interstellar medium. That's what we mean. Very good. Ooh, I like that a lot. And, yeah, and if we perhaps last figure, if we look at uh, larger scales, we see this impact. Uh, figure eight point five, for instance, uh -huh. uh, you see uh, uh, oh. the result of the impact yeah. on the interstellar medium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, this one. So you see uh, the climate climatic jet uh, on the bottom of the figure, and then you see that it, it is uh, shaping. The interstellar medium. So it is in fact creating like a cavity because you have the jet. It is creating a cavity, uh, pushing all the matter, and then this matter is accumulating uh, in uh, where you have the shock front, the matter colliding the interstellar medium. Mm -hmm. So when the interstellar medium begin becomes to be uh, too dense, it cannot uh, push it uh, more, or it push it, uh, it slows down. Right. So you have the shape which is created. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm very good yeah so we have uh, many uh, many things like this uh, uh, happening we see also some uh, superluminal uh, motion in these objects oh yeah uh, mm -hmm. yeah uh, for instance in the, well in the following figure you see uh, one uh, you see that when you look at the ejection of the you see blobs of plasma which are ejected and we, when we, you measure the the velocity of these blobs of plasma in the sky, On the you sky. measure the velocity, which is 1.25, uh, the velocity of the light, uh -oh. which means bigger than the velocity of the light. Of course, it's apparent velocity. So if you make the, the, the computation, if you, can, if you compute this in the special relativity frame, then uh, you have a velocity which is very close to the velocity of the light, like nearly 92% the velocity of the light. But it doesn't. It is isn't bigger, right? Well, this is not allowed. But the batteries are still. Mm -hmm. 
regulated by the Fed. But it can look that way. Very good. This is from, uh, oh yeah, Mirabelle and Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was my, uh, he was my PhD director. Uh, Mirabelle? Supervisor. PhD supervisor. Ah, good note. Very good. Uh, yeah. So I, uh, I made my uh, PhD on this uh, on this subject. Well, yeah. that was a long time ago already. Nah. <laughs> oh, come, come, come. <laughs> here, a uh, young pumpkin here. Okay. You know, time goes very quickly. Yes, it does too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it Why really are quickly. we getting off track here? <laughs> Exactly. Okay. Sorry. And then we have couples. Yes. Yes. How yeah. Then at the end, I I I decided when well, I um, I thought it would it would be useful to uh, have a chapter yeah. where uh, I was uh, collecting uh, different uh, the different observatories and also uh, observing at different wavelengths and uh, with different messengers. So, so I uh, collected in this chapter all the way to observe the. Uh, well, not only the binaries, but uh, well, everything you can see in astrophysics and in the sky. So this uh, uh, this is uh, uh, well. You have uh, if you look at figure nine point two for instance, yeah. uh, which is in the page nine point two nine two. Mm -hmm. Which one you want to go with? Yeah, well, uh, figure nine one. You have all the satellites that are. Uh, uh, useful for this kind of uh, studies. And in the figure 9.2, which is not very, the nicest figure of the book, but it's very sure. useful because you see the different facilities um, uh, which allow to study the uh, accreting binaries. So uh, you see at uh, different wavelengths like gamma rays, X rays, um, visible near infrared, radio, but you see also the cosmic rays, neutrinos, gravitational waves. Uh, and so uh, this is why I, I said earlier that now we are entering a multi-messenger array where we can uh, observe at different wavelengths, different messengers, and this gives us a, a nice uh, picture on, uh, uh, that of these binaries that we can then study with a more complete view than before. So if you study a binary with only... Uh, uh, observing oh, in the visible, for instance, you, you see only some phenomena, but not everything. So you mm -hmm. need to observe. Exactly, yeah, you see. Uh, so you need to observe with all these uh, facilities to really see something. You need to see the whole elephant. <laughs> um, exactly, yes. <laughs> what, is, exactly. What, is, what is the difference between... Uh, orange here means uh, proposed mission, or what is the difference between green, red, and, orange, and red here? Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, for instance, uh, um, uh, so for instance, well, you see, uh, well, it's a bit. Uh, you see, this figure is from 2016. So, for instance, uh, you see that Virgo is still in a range, but now it is uh, right. uh, operating. Um, and for instance, you have the fast also in the radio that we, is already uh, uh, operating in China. Uh, you see uh, also in radio that we we'll soon have the SCAR, the square kilometer array, which will uh, revolutionize the, the astrophysics field. Yes. Uh, in infrared, you see that the James Webb Space Telescope has been launched now. Yes. And uh, Euclid will be launched will be launched soon. Yes. Uh, in visible, you have uh, the VLT, uh, LSST, TMT, and EELT, which will be uh, have uh, which will have their uh, first light uh, in a few years. Yeah, nice. Uh, wavelengths. Well, we'll have also the Svom satellite, which is a, a satellite observing uh, uh, gamma ray bursts yeah. uh, at different wavelengths, uh, re and also uh, uh, related to uh, observatories uh, on Earth to uh, get some uh, more precise observations. Um, well, in X-rays also, we have some different uh, satellites, uh, gamma rays. Um, in neutrinos, we have uh, now uh, KM3Net, which is the oh, yeah. uh, kilometer cube, you know, cubic kilometer uh, observatory to observe some neutrinos. Uh, uh, so, you know, the neutrinos observatory are, are quite funny because instead of looking at the sky, they look at, they look at the Earth. Because the neutrino, they don't interact much with the matter. So to get a better chance to, to have an interaction, we observe 
toward the Earth, and we see the neutrinos that have interacted with the nucleus in the Earth. Yes. So, so it's quite funny to to observe the, the Earth and not the sky, yeah, but they observe yeah. the sky at the other end. It's and, a filter. Uh, it's a filter. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, and then we have the cosmic rays, uh, which with also uh, projects that are proposed like Gemozo. Just yes. proposing to observe the whole atmosphere from a sat satellite to uh, get a view of these cosmic rays. So yeah, we have a whole bunch now of uh, nice. observatories, uh, nice. which are interesting to uh, to to use. So we got uh, an exciting exciting future coming up. Yeah, and so in this chapter, I collect all the all these uh, different uh, uh, tools. Uh, well, I also show the different what, what we'll have in the future. If you go to page nine point five, for instance, nine five, sorry, nine five, you see all the uh, oh, yeah. the different uh, uh, observatories that we have to uh, detect some gravitational waves. So uh, I spoke earlier of LIGO Virgo, but this is right. mainly to observe the uh, couple of uh, the pairs of uh, neutron stars or black holes. But uh, in the 2030s, we'll have LISA, which is a, a mission of uh, uh, three satellites okay. uh, separated by nearly one million kilometers that will be put in space and uh, with a precision and accuracy of uh, nearly picometer That's and uh, to be able to detect the deformation of space time when a gravitational wave is uh, passing, passing through these satellites. So this will also be a, a very big revolution in the detection of gravitational waves. And it is uh, with this object, with this uh, uh, mission, and with these three satellites that we observe the binary white dwarfs that orbit uh, each other like this, that we spoke mm -hmm. earlier about. Mm -hmm. And nice. at the end of this chapter, we uh, I also collected all the uh, virtual observatory facilities, because in fact, now uh, we have many um, uh, we have many data, uh, observed data that are uh, accessible through the archives, and we have many tools to uh, to use and to uh, interpret to analyze this data. And so I collected all of this in this uh, in this chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this is, so this can be useful to not only to binaries, in fact, but to many people uh, you know that are new to this field of astrophysics and want to know what tool to use to uh, mm -hmm. uh, analyze the preferred data. Mm -hmm. Very good. And uh, I think at this, uh, yeah, the beginning, if you look at page 9.1, uh, because in fact, at the beginning of each chapter, I put a quote of uh, uh, different ah. author. Nice. Um, nice. There is one from me, which is hidden in the book, but this one is from my father. <laughs> uh, very nice so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, kind of uh, beautiful, very yeah, beautiful. Quite, yeah. well, so uh, I think yeah we arrived nearly at the end of this book then there is only the conclusion and, uh, let's slide let's, a take peek yeah so it covers many things yeah all all things accreting yes Binary. Yeah, nearly all things are creating. Not only because you you know what you when you have a well because I spoke of uh, how it evolved before the accretion and also after the accretion. Mm -hmm. So it's not only accreting, in fact. Yeah. But the central role of accretion is um, is fundamental in this book. Yeah. Indeed. Very nice. Yeah. Very. Well, nice. there was also the production and the accretion and all this, of course. Very cool. Basics of accretion. Very cool. Sylvain, thank you so much for walking us through your very lovely new ebook that is out. Very good. Um, and you touched on cool. it, uh, you touched on it a little bit. Um, but let me go ahead and ask. So, so where do you think we go in the field of accreting binaries over the next two to five years? Uh, you know, you mentioned some of the new observatories coming up. Or is there um, particular targets that are close to your heart? Um, that you'd like to, to see answered on either low mass or high mass binaries or others. Um, and do you think that there will be enough progress in the field over, let's say, the next two to five years? So there will be a volume two of accreting binaries. Well, I, I think indeed that uh, it's a field that has evolved a lot in these uh, last years because, uh, you know, I would have written it, this book in. Uh, 
uh, even uh, five years ago, okay. I would not have put the gravitation waves in it because the first detection was in, uh, uh, you know, in... Uh, 2017-ish, 18-ish? Yeah, 17 for the neutron stars, uh, 15 for the black hole. So yeah, five years ago, I could have spoken about the first detection of a black hole, but not neutron stars. Uh, so I, I should have said if I had written it like seven years ago, it would okay. have been too. Then this would be so, fine. so yes, indeed, um, this was the revolution because uh, uh, now uh, with the detection of the black hole like this in gravitational waves, it gave more um, interest to the binaries uh, because they are, you know, candidate progenitors to, to merge at the end of their evolution. And so if you want to really know how many of the system will merge, but you need to understand these systems, the binaries. So I, I think indeed that um, it's a very bright field now and uh, probably thanks to the gravitational wave detection. Yes. So I guess that this will continue because there will soon uh, the O4 campaign, which will begin uh, from mm -hmm. LIGO, Virgo, and Kagra. Mm -hmm. And then, as I said, um, all the all the uh, all these observatories that will come soon. So for for uh, well, uh, for the Europeans, you have the European Large Telescope, the ELT, uh -huh. uh, with mm -hmm. 38 meters of diameter. We have the James Webb Space Telescope, which is also uh, uh, here to use and uh, waiting for us uh, to uh, point it in the right direction. There so, you go. There you go. And, mm. Yeah, for, for instance, when you have a merging of two neutron stars uh, with a very um, accurate uh, position, then we will uh, point it towards this to see if we can detect something. Nice. So uh, then uh, with Lisa for the with these three satellites, the detecting some. Uh, uh, binaries of uh, white dwarf neutron stars. Uh, even we, it, it will be able to detect the black holes rotating around a supermassive black hole. So a small black hole, like a stellar mass black hole, orbiting around a supermassive black hole. Okay. okay. It's a new. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a new field that is uh, entering, uh, that is uh, opening, and uh, well, uh, uh, it's also interesting to see that uh, you know for. Uh, uh, since Galileo, uh, Galilei, uh, 400 uh, years ago, uh, now uh, we detected uh, the first uh, gravitational wave uh, seven years ago, and already we know uh, we have detected nearly 100 uh, merging of black holes and uh, neutron stars, yeah. and uh, so the field is evolving very quickly. So. Cool. I don't know when uh, would be necessary the the second term of this book, right. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know this is the problem when you when you write a book that is uh, uh, very quickly you have new observations. Well, it's not a problem because it shows that's very uh, moving field and very interesting field, but uh, right. you have the impression you should uh, update it all the time. In fact, yeah, yeah, I'm like a living book or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. The science doesn't stop, so yeah, it doesn't. you have to. <laughs> very good. Fortunately. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Sylvain, thank you so much again for walking us through your very lovely. You're welcome. Appreciate it. And that will do everyone. And I hope this made your astronomy day just a little bit better. And we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.